Hi, my name is Richard. Um, I am a teacher in Hawaii, and Ms. Pappas asked me to record a video to talk about becoming diabetic, um, what it's meant to be a diabetic, uh, and how I take care of myself with uh, medication and uh, dietary habits and all of those things. So um, let me tell you a little bit about becoming diabetic. Um, when I was 15, uh, right before school started, my sophomore year in high school, uh, I wasn't feeling very good. I was drinking a lot of fluids. Um, and uh, my mom took me to the doctor, and the doctor tested my blood sugar level. Um, it was over 900, which is incredibly high, um, if you know, if you guys have been studying a little bit. And um, the doctor said that I had diabetes. My mom fainted. I had no idea what it meant, but since my mom immediately fainted, I knew it couldn't be good. Uh, after we revived my mother, um, the doctor started to talk to me about you know, what it meant to be diabetic. Uh, of course, my first question, um, at the time, I was uh, obsessed with soccer. Uh, I still am. Um, I was dreaming of being a professional soccer player. And so my first question was, what does this mean for uh, athletics? And the doctor said, well, my oldest son was diagnosed at about your age. He was an incredible athlete, but he lost all of his size and speed and strength and didn't really ever pursue sports anymore. But he's a happy young man. He's a happy man now. Uh, of course, I was, you know, wanted to explode. Uh, my dreams were suddenly immediately shattered. Uh, one minute I was at a soccer camp, and a week later I was in a, a doctor's office being told that I'd never play soccer again. Um, so, you know, trying to figure out what it meant to be diabetic, I, I immediately found some other resources that told me that I could figure it out and, and still play sports, and I was determined. Um, I was 120 pounds at the time. Uh, I was a skinny little sophomore. Um, and I really started taking care of my diabetes. I went in the weight room every day, was on the soccer field every day, and um, within the next two years, I'd put on uh, almost 60 pounds of muscle, um, and was stronger and faster and an even better athlete than I'd ever been. Uh, I became hyper aware of everything I was putting in my body, uh, when I was putting it in, the effects it had on my body, um, you know, what I needed to do with my body in terms of uh, athletic things in the weight room, etc. So uh, it really was a, a big change, but ultimately possibly a, a good one for me. Um, I was a B student. And having to take care of all of the elements of diabetes meant that I was organized suddenly. Um, I was on top of everything, and I, I quickly became um, a much better student because of it. So let's talk about um, balancing diabetes, especially as a young type 1 diabetic. Um, I'm sure you guys know this, but basically what it means for me to be diabetic is that my body does not produce any insulin at all. Um, and so when I put carbohydrates into my body, I must have a way of my cells knowing to use the carbohydrates. Otherwise, the, the, the carbs, the sugars, would just sit in my bloodstream unused and make me feel bad. So um, insulin goes in. Your body makes it naturally. I put it in through my insulin pump um, right here um, and that I wear all the time. It's hooked up to my, to my stomach. So you can see it's hooked up to me. Um, and a lot of diabetics take shots. Uh, it's the other method, the pump or shots. Either way, I put insulin in. Um, it goes into my body and tells my cells to open up, to use the carbohydrates, and then hopefully that balances out how much sugar is in my body and how much insulin is in my body. So that I'm not too high, that means having too much sugar in my bloodstream, or too low, that means not having enough sugar in my bloodstream. Um, and the trick entirely is to figuring out how much I need to eat, when I need to eat it, how much insulin to take, and when to take it, um, which is, is really complex. And it, uh, it occupies 10% of my brain at all times. Um, so let's see. Um, let's talk about low blood sugar for a second. When I take too much insulin or don't eat enough food, either one, and the ratio of uh, sugar to insulin um, is not high enough, then I start to feel a little bit dizzy, I start to feel woozy, I start sweating a lot, especially in my sleep. Um, and eventually, if I didn't do anything, 
if my numbers dropped below 30 or 40, then I might um, have, um, you know, like a an attack of some sort in which I could, ultimately I could pass out, um, but I think it's pretty rare. Uh, if I went really low, some, some pretty bad things could happen. Um, I've only had three or four of those in my life that have been really, 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 really low, and each time, fortunately, I've had someone to help me out. Um, so when my blood sugar is low, uh, the best thing I could possibly eat would probably be a banana. Bananas go into your system very quickly. Um, any kind of fruit, uh, an orange probably, anything with really quick natural sugars can go in and raise the blood sugar. Um, I'll often drink a Gatorade if I'm playing soccer um, because that can raise it very quickly and I can get a lot of quick carbs in my body as fast as I want. Um, the truth is, though, that it's hard to keep bananas with you, you know, since 24 hours a day it's something I'm dealing with. So I often keep things like bars that I can travel with and keep in my bags anywhere I go. Um, the best thing if, you know, if, if someone needed to help me, like let's say my wife um, couldn't get me to respond in the middle of the night and I wouldn't eat anything or drink anything, she could take like, you know, a simple little applesauce packet that we have for our three-year-old um, and like shove that in my mouth and it would go in and help me out somehow. Um, cake frosting could really help. Either way, um, it's this feeling of being dizzy and, and ultimately can lead to some pretty big issues. Um, I would say I go low probably once or twice a day, um, but I can manage it pretty quickly and get my blood sugar to raise um, really quickly. So it's, it's usually only a 10 to 20 minute problem. I can fix it pretty quickly. High blood sugar, on the other hand, um, is a little more problematic um, and also very common. Uh, my blood sugar goes too high probably three, four, or five times a day. Um, and the way to fix that is to take insulin which will go into my body and tell my cells to open up, accept the sugars and use them, and then my blood sugar level, my, the ratio of uh, blood and sugar to insulin will lower and I'll be back at optimal range. I usually want to be anywhere from like 80 to 140. Um, so if I'm below 80, uh, it's considered low, and if I'm above 140 or 150, then I consider myself high. But again, if I'm at 160 or 170, that's actually fairly normal and okay. I, I, I only try to deal with a problem if I'm at more like 200 or 250 or even 300. Um, and then I take insulin and sometimes exercise to bring it down. The best ways to balance your blood sugar as a diabetic is through exercise, um, through eating properly, and then of course through checking your blood sugar uh, all the time, thinking about you know what your blood sugar level is and whether you need to eat food, whether you need to do nothing, whether you need to take insulin, etc. Um, again, I would say 10% of my brain at all times is thinking, what's my blood sugar level? What do I need to do uh, to make sure that I stay balanced or, or get balanced? Um, there are long-term dangers of having uh, high blood sugars. The smallest um, you know, blood vessels in your body, like in your eyes and in your toes, they start to get like jammed up with sugars and stop to stop working properly. I have to get my eyes tested twice a year just to make sure that um, I'm not developing um, clots in my eyes. And uh, it's a lot harder to test for my feet, but you know, uh, everything is 100% fully functional, so there have been no issues there. Uh, I take extremely good care of my diabetes, um, so I've been fortunate to not have any complications. I'm about to turn 35, so I've had diabetes for 20 years. And um, it's definitely caused its share of problems, but through managing it, I haven't had any long-term effects that I know of so far. Um, let's talk a little bit about how wildly insulin, exercise, um, all these things can affect um, my body. So let's say I want to um, eat some food. The typical amount of insulin I need um, is one unit of insulin for 15 carbohydrates. But if I'm exercising, I need a lot less insulin. If I'm doing nothing, watching a movie, I need a lot more insulin. Um, if I'm about to go play soccer for an hour and I eat 60 carbohydrates, instead of using taking four units of insulin, I would probably take one unit of insulin. If I'm about to watch a two-hour movie, 
Um, I would probably, instead of taking four units for that, those 60 carbs, I would probably take six or seven units. So it's literally six or seven times the amount of insulin if I'm watching a movie versus going to play soccer. It's a big difference. Same thing for lowering blood sugar. Let's say I check my sugar and it's at 200. Usually I need one unit of insulin to lower at 30 points. Um, so if I'm at a normal place, I'm awake, I'm relaxing, but you know I'm not like doing nothing, I might take three units to lower my blood sugar from 200 to 110. Um, that's not exact, but it would be my guess. During a soccer game, if I were at 200, um, I might take half of a unit and expect it to rocket down to 120. If I were watching a movie or doing nothing, um, I might take four or five units. So again, 10 times the amount of insulin to lower my blood sugar if I'm doing nothing versus playing a soccer game. Um, so it's a lot to think about, but it ultimately gets balanced out. Let me show you some of the equipment that I use. I, I know that uh, she wanted me to do that. So let me start with the pump. Um, this is my insulin pump. Um, pretty easy to take insulin, like take units. So if I wanted to give myself four units, I would press activate, let it count up, and I would press activate again. Um, this is hooked through a tube. There's insulin in here. Um, as you can see, there's insulin in here that connects and pushes that down the tube into my stomach. Um, every three days, I move my site, which is where it's connected to my stomach, because it's only a small little plastic tube that's actually connected to me. It's not very much. This is the, this is the needle that I put in, and it's got a, a, a small tube connected to it. So I put the needle in, and when I pull the needle out, the thin plastic tube stays in my stomach and then my insulin pump and the wiring connects to that tube. The tubing is probably only that long, um, maybe a centimeter and a half. So it's really not in very much. Um, I fill that thing you just saw with insulin. This is Humalog insulin. Humalog is the fastest acting kind of insulin that I can take. That means it goes in and acts within 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then it's gone from my system. Um, so I fill this up. Uh, and then I put this inside my pump, and I, I have to fill that about every three days, too. So every three days, I completely change the tubing, the thing that's attached to my stomach, um, the insulin that's in my pump, uh, all of those things I change and replace. Um, I check my blood sugar about 12 times a day. Um, that's not exact. On days where I'm having problems or playing a lot of soccer or something, I might check 20 times. On days where everything's going smoothly, I might only check five or six times. Um, to do that, um, this is um, the machine that I use for that. Um, I put, uh, let's see if I can get to where I can actually see this. Um, I put one of these strips in here, which when I put the strip in, um, it takes about, about five seconds for it to measure. So what I have to do is I have to put a drop of blood I prick my finger, I put a drop of blood onto the strip, and then it will tell me how much sugar is in my system. Three, two, one, and it says that I'm at 132, um, which is 135, which is a, a perfectly good number for me. I'm not going to take any insulin for that, even though it's slightly above the 120, that's ideal. Um, let's say I were at 200, it's late at night, I would probably take three units stay up for an extra hour to make sure that I wasn't going too low um, and go from there. What else? Anything else I need to cover? Um, a lot of diabetics take shots three or four times a day. I prefer the pump because I can take 12 to 15 shots in a day rather than three or four big ones. It gives me a lot more control. Um, and if my blood sugar is messed up, uh, then I can press buttons and fix it immediately instead of having to wait hours for my next shot. So it um, makes a lot more sense to me to be on the pump, even though I've always got this thing hooked into me, which kind of sucks, but it does mean that I can fix my problems immediately. What else? Um, as an athlete, it does mean I have to control my blood sugars. It's very hard to play sports um, when my blood sugar is messed up. Um, I went and played Division three soccer in college instead of Division one because... Division one schools were unforgiving, and I was only at my best maybe half the time in college. Um, half the time I was messed up to some degree, and my Division three coach was very understanding. 
I'm trying to take care of myself long term. I'm a father, I have two kids, and I really want to have fully functional eyes and feet and body when I'm 75 so I can be playing with them, even with my grandkids. So I'm really trying to take care of my body. I check my blood sugar all the time. I think about what I put in my body. Um, and uh, modern medication really helps me take care of it. Um, this is just the most recent um, thing that I use, but I think in 10 or 15 years, I won't be even using this. Right now, they are inserting islet cells, which are the part of your body that makes insulin. They're inserting islet cells into uh, the liver, the kidney, into different places in your body, and they're having mixed results with getting them to take and not be attacked again. Um, so again, I, I think in 10 or 15 years, um, type 1 diabetics will just have surgery and have to monitor that surgery and make sure that it's working. Um, I think that's the future. Either way, I'm sorry this video was so long. I hope it was informative. Um, and uh, good luck with your study of diabetes. Thanks.